Hey, Tony. Hey, guys. Do you want me to stand up on the yeah, thing? Yeah, I like standing. I like being down here with you guys. I feel like I'm, in, I'm a man of the people with you guys. Hi, how are you? Good. 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 Do you guys enjoy it? Good. Great. Yeah. You guys, uh, any, well, hey, good to see you. Uh, how, you guys want to go one by one? Sure. Uh, what's the uh, what's the protocol backstage when you see something like what happened with Cody with that chair shot and the blood? I'll call the doctor immediately. It was uh, re obviously really regrettable what happened. Uh, I, I, I don't know if this is the time to go into detail about what happened, but uh, we had taken precautions uh, in this situation and that specific situation and a uh, doctor was available and uh, Cody does not have a concussion and uh, his staples and that we're all very grateful for that. Your first thoughts about Fighter Fest the results? Uh, my first thoughts about the results, I think it's uh, really like the, what happened at the end with uh, Kenny Omega and John Moxley leaves us with a lot of really big intrigue going into their match at All Out. I think it's a huge match at All Out coming up, uh, and it's one that people are really excited about. We announced it right before tickets went on sale, and then we had the most demand anybody's ever had for a show when we did our pay-per-view announcement, and I think there's going to be huge demand on pay-per-view, and I think uh, people are really excited about that match, so I think uh, that left a lot at the end. Kenny Kenny was up, and Mox was up, and, and then, uh, you know, to see at the end, I think uh, it felt like Kenny had done so much to finish Mox off, but Mox was still uh, there. He took a licking and kept ticking, and uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, and uh, also, uh, in the women's matches, uh, I thought it was awesome. Uh, Rio was tremendous uh, and uh, really earned that victory, and uh, that was a really hard-fought women's match. Also, uh, Allie and her match, uh, I thought they put together a great match, and Allie was uh, tremendous in that. Uh, the three-way tag was like a very significant result. I think uh, for the best friends now, they're in a really good position, and we have this tag team tournament that I had told uh, the media, I told specifically I said Steve Austin as a member of the media, that I wanted to do a tag team tournament, and we're going to do a tag team tournament when we go to a weekly television show. And uh, so, yeah, uh, th that was a really important result as well. Uh, Shima getting a win, I think that was a really important result. He's got a big match with Kenny Omega in two weeks in Jacksonville, right up uh, the road in my backyard, in my little home, in my home venue I live there, in that <laughs> complex uh, that where you guys are gonna go be at the show at. And uh, that was a huge result. Uh, and so yeah, uh, the great show all around. And obviously uh, Co Cody and Darby, that was a big, uh, for Darby, what a showing tonight. Uh, and the draw, um, you saw that, uh, you know, I think they really went for it at the end, and it got really heated. But you know, you got to take, the, you got to watch the time limit. And uh, Darby Allen, what a, what a showing! What a sh what a great match! And uh, it was unfortunate what happened after the match between when uh, Sean went and did that. And uh, you know, it was an unfortunate situation. And all I'm going to say to you guys on it right now, and and I, I will talk about it more in detail. But you could build the safest airplane in the world. And if there's pilot error, uh, there's pilot error. And uh, that was, uh, it was not good. Um, so, yeah, but what else, uh, that, uh, there were, I'm trying to think, that was, uh, I covered a lot of the matches there. Do you have any other questions on the matches? Or? Uh, speaking of Fight for the Fall in two weeks, how did you feel about WWE counter programming with the Evolve Anniversary Show? Uh, I mean, we just kind of focus on our shows and what we're doing. Uh, I'm really excited about Fight for the Fall, and thanks for asking about it, because uh, it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time since we first had the con uh, conceived All Elite Wrestling, because I think it's going to make a really positive contribution to my local community in Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, uh, I think people want to come out that day. We're going to have a very good crowd, and I also think that uh, uh, a lot of people are going to watch it on TV, and uh, we'll be taking donations and uh, trying to help victims of local violence. And uh, I'm a huge wrestling fan, and I won't be able to watch uh, that show uh, because uh, we have a lot of things going on of our own. So I think for a lot of people, that's probably unfortunate. But uh, you know, but there's, there's, you know, I, there's only so many weekends, and you got to do your shows when you're doing them. So what are you when you do? talk about the uh, the first episode on TNT, um, what goes through the planning process of planning what venue you're going to do, what size venue you're going to do, and then moving uh, forward? It's doing a weekends. really extensive process. It's a really good question. We, and again, we haven't said anything specific on dates. So, uh, but without saying anything uh, too specific, Raf is standing right here. We've had really extensive conversations on it. We spend a lot of time talking about it, and. Uh, uh, we're going to have a great lineup of buildings prepared. We're going to do really great uh, TV shows, and I think uh, it's something that people have been missing. Uh, there's certainly been uh, one company that consistently has produced really uh, high production value TV and from big arenas, 
uh, weekly on a live basis, and I think you know now there'll be more people doing it, and I think that's really good for wrestling fans to have more of that. So that's an, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you had asked. You mentioned the uh, time limit, and also the Bucks had mentioned that as well. Is that something we expect to see on the TV? Uh, yeah. Weekly? Yeah. Well, there's only so much time. We only have so much time on the show, so I think we're going to have time limits, and you have to, you know, we're going to have to stay in the time limits, or we have to move, go on and have other matches because otherwise, uh, one match could take the whole show. Sure. It's, it's, as you saw. But yeah, we, we will have time limits, yeah. Tony, tonight we saw attacks, we saw middle fingers, we, there was cursing, there was blood, there was chair shocks. Can we expect some of these things on TNT no. weekly? No, 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 <laughs> definitely not. Definitely okay. not. That was because this, this was not TV. This was a, a streaming show. It was, uh, you know, a, a not, it was not a, it was effectively a pay-per-view in a, in a lot of the world. In the U.S. it was presented free, but this was a pay-per-view. And so you can expect different rules for the pay-per-view. Uh, and we said going in, these are non-sanctioned, uh, uh, unsanctioned hardcore matches and I think that uh, that expectation was going in and we wouldn't have uh, advertised that kind of uh, violence that you know we, we wouldn't have offered that on TNT a hundred percent no so no that's a good question though Austin thanks for asking because I'm glad you gave me a chance to clarify <laughs> Tony uh, with uh, Double or Nothing being so successful what was the first move after that to make sure that momentum kept going? Uh, the, I mean, a lot of the pieces were in place. The first move after that was really to make sure we had everything, all the ducks in a row, to do a great series of shows through the summer and through television. And we'd already been working on those things, and it was just really marching that path forward. And I think that's going to consistently be what we have to do to make sure we can all keep offering great shows, not just like minute to minute and not be a wrestling company where like at the beginning of the show, like I'm telling Keith, what is going to happen later in the show, like, you know, which has happened on other wrestling companies before. It wouldn't be the first time Keith's been uh, on a headset and he has no idea what's going to happen on the show he's producing. Like, generally, I think we do a good job uh, keeping, like, the production crew informed, uh, like, what to expect. And sometimes there's surprises, and that's what makes wrestling great, like live TV, and, and uh, there's, that's that awesome aspect of it. But, like, uh, going back to your question, Chris, like, I just think that, like, we uh, have to keep, like, planning ahead to keep producing great shows and like it's only going to ramp up when we get to weekly right now we've been doing a show a month and we made double or nothing which is a great pay-per-view in any way you slice it and uh we did that thanks austin Sorry about if that. we were if we were in jackson because if you don't know the background austin like That's played be for, fine. austin played for the jaguars and uh <laughs> so if i have a lot of people don't know that we're in the scrum so like i want people like because we, we did the last scrum of double or nothing people are like why do you keep like because he played for us in jacksonville he's my friend and but yeah you could coach Sorry would, coach that. would have find, find you for that find buddy. me uh <laughs> i can't find you anymore uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's too fun. It's a good fun. I haven't seen him like this in a while. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm sorry. But anyway, back to your question. We I just we have to keep doing great shows. It's really fun uh, being here with you guys, and I think it seemed like people really enjoyed the show. The crowd afterwards was really happy, and it makes me really happy because uh, you know it's the second show in a row. We've had a lot of fans in a building. I think production wise, Keith and the guys did a great job, and the wrestlers killed it. So. We just have to keep doing that, and it takes a lot of work to prepare to do that. And uh, so the day after Double or Nothing, like, everybody was out, notebooks out, pens out, like, making plans, and we just have to keep doing that and plan ahead so we're not doing stuff at the last minute, trying to throw stuff together and trying to agree to what we're going to, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's no way to run any kind of business. Tony, the way the rundown was set up tonight, uh, it was action, action, promo, action, 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 promo, action. Not a lot of cool-down spots, but you didn't lose the crowd at all. Uh, what does that say about what you guys were able to accomplish, and is that something you can expect with TV as you move forward? It's like uh, when you watch like uh, a professional fighting event. Like if I were watching, uh, a, say, a UFC or a mixed martial arts event or a boxing show, that's how it would be. There's the fights. You know, I was at the Ruiz Joshua fight at MSG at ringside, and I watched. And it was, you know, it was they had fights, and uh, there weren't a lot of cool down spots between the fights, and they went out and they had a great main event and built up and up, and the crowd was really with it. And uh, I think it's the same thing with a, with a wrestling show. If you want, like, have you focus on the fights. People are here to see the matches. We advertise the matches. And also, people are really into what we do on promos. And I think, like, our social media, being the elite and the road, too, uh, we do some of the best stuff anybody's doing out there in terms of building up matches and doing, like, unconventional stuff and doing, like, comedy. And we did, like, some comedy stuff in the matches tonight. And I will say that, like, uh, yeah, like, there was, like, a, like a hardcore... Uh, a hardcore match with a non-wrestler performing and there was an element of nepotism and you're going to see that uh, every time we come to CEO like which will be once a year and at least you're not getting it once a week. I was going to say, earlier on, the Young Bucks had mentioned that they thought Fighter Fest might be a one-off. Uh, is this going to be a partnership, whether it's with 
this particular event or in Daytona that you want that you want to I really like it. I thought it was really fun. People seem to have a good time. I think we could do this every year. I don't know why I wouldn't want to come back and do this. And uh, uh, Alex is a great partner and uh, you know, it's, it, was, it wasn't my favorite match of the night, but they went out and he worked really hard and uh, they really like, he, he put a lot on his shoulders and going out, I was like, you're planning to do a lot more than like almost any non-wrestler with your own level of experience has gone out and done in this kind of setting. And do you feel good about it? And I thought he did a really good job. And Kenny and us, I put a lot of faith in Kenny to get this right. And Kenny uh, put a lot of faith in him. And you know, I thought he did a good job. And, uh, you know, that aside, like, uh, just the show in general, I thought the, the fans from the convention were great. I really enjoyed the experience of being here all week. With the gaming fans, there were a lot of people who, like, didn't really know the wrestling going in. And I think there were some people that came in from the convention like that. But when we got in here, it felt like, it felt like the people really did know our stuff. It felt like it was a crowd that really knew us very well. And I think there was some crossover with the convention. But generally, I think we have, like, a pretty loyal fan base. But they enjoyed the convention, too. There's a lot of people that were just doing both things. And I think that's great. And it's a really important thing to Kenny, so it's a really important thing to me. So, so I'm sorry. Guys, no, sorry, good. guys. Last, last question. No, it's fine. I'm good. I, if you guys want, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine, Mandy. I'm, I actually really enjoy catching up with you guys, and I met a lot of people seem like they have stuff. So what's up, boss? For, so from your perspective, I mean, what, what's more satisfying? Is it signing a, a big name like Moxley, or is it kind of introducing the world to like a Darby Allen, where nobody really knows him, but everyone's chanting his name tonight? What, what's more satisfying? No, there's like you position? can't have a re you can't have like a one person wrestling company. You can't just have one thing. There's no way you can have like a wrestling company that people feel good about. There's never been one in the history of the world where there was just like one act that people care about. There have to be like a lot of really interesting thing, interesting things going on. Like you have to have really established performers that people care about, like to bring in the casual fans, but also just to like bring it out for everybody that 100% of the people care about, like John Moxley. And then you have Darby, who like any hardcore wrestling fan by now has seen. And it's funny you bring up, because they just recently, like not for us, but an independent match. They had a great match. They had a great match, and it was awesome. And, uh, and then they both came in and separately had awesome matches tonight. But I think a large percentage of our fan base probably uh, knows him, but I think it's actually a great thing because like, they can almost work together. And, and I, it's not, I don't prefer one thing to the other. I think it's great to have both. And like uh, having somebody with the star power of a John Moxley who can bring in so many fans, like hopefully we'll introduce like, more people to how great Darby is and like, what, awesome, what an awesome performer, what an awesome wrestler he is. And uh, I think everybody enjoyed like Darby in, in a in a setting. I thought it was an awesome wrestling match. And uh, so yeah, I just think you need both. So uh, we we've heard, we've seen how like Jungle Boy was in the Battle Royal, and then today he got to showcase himself a little bit more in singles competition. There's a lot of people here on the roster that you know want to get a, their chance to showcase. And we've we've heard the stories in WWE. We listened to Moxley when he was on with uh, with Jericho. There's been a morale issue. There might still be one. What's the plan for? Or what if I have no idea. I, 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 yeah, I don't know if there's a. W w what do you mean? Like, a, like how, how are you planning to incorporate everyone on the roster, whether it be it, social media? You're or not going to see everybody on the show every week and like stuffed in just for the point of having them on the show, just to get them in like a small setting. I want to try and get people in like meaningful segments every week on every show. So that means that like some people, not everyone's going to be on every show, and a lot of our best performers like weren't on this show, and a lot of top people. And just like that, in a fight for the fallen, there's going to be top people that aren't on the show. Uh, the biggest pay-per-views will try and get every big name, you know, at a double or nothing and all out. And future, the biggest pay-per-views are that are on our uh, roster, whether it's four or five of them a year. Uh, you know, you're going to see everything but the kitchen sink. But I think, uh, you know, there's a difference with like a four-hour pay-per-view with like a one-hour pre-show, how many people you can get on to this, where, you know, it's a streaming special where you're scheduling maybe a one-hour pre-show and then, you know, a little under three, and then you're planning, well, okay, a uh, two-hour TV show, you'll obviously be able to use even less people. So I just think uh, rotating performers and trying to make sure you get have everyone keeping storylines, that's where social media will be involved. And also trying to do, hopefully, like more hours of content, trying to incorporate more people, but in a schedule that like is manageable. Because like I think uh, you can keep people relevant and give people like things to do in wrestling without keeping them like on the road, like you know, five, six days a week. You have such a stacked roster on that note. How many, how much space do you have left? Like how many more members of the roster? We're not actively out like trying to sign uh, people to fill out the roster. I don't think we need like depth across the roster. I think we have like a really deep, awesome roster and we have top stars too. So it would have to be like something really, really captivating. So you know if we're making moves in free agency, it's because we feel really strong. And I've said this before, I feel like really good about the roster we have. I feel like it's a really stacked roster. And I'm glad to hear that it's kind of the per you know, the popular thought now, and it's, it's not just me saying it, um, because I think we have a really stacked roster. So yeah, you better believe if anybody signs with us as a free agent, we feel really, really strongly about him because we certainly don't need to add anybody. We have a, a really great group. We have, uh, we're gonna have great uh, men's 
singles and tag and great women's singles and tag uh, divisions, tournaments, and, and champions. I think we're really close to crowning an awesome uh, champion between Chris Jericho and Hangman Page. Uh, I think, you know, and then from there we'll be announcing uh, how we'll be crowning our other champions in the divisions and uh, we're trying to make those really meaningful and I think they are really meaningful and you'll see that like just like you guys asked about doing shows where it's like the focus is on the matches but we didn't lose anybody I think it's by design because like people want to see great wrestling matches and a show that's like focused in the arena and I've talked about that a lot I talked about it the last time I did a scrum with you guys and I talked about it I think on uh, on the radio with Mark Henry and I, I've talked about it on Steve Austin's podcast that I want to do shows that are focused in the arena and I think I talked about that with you Chris on YouTube that I'd like to keep uh, the, the shows in, you know focused and not too much backstage because I think uh, what people care about is the the content mostly of the wrestling matches that doesn't mean a hundred percent but probably yeah ninety percent of the show or more should be like wrestling Tony um, we see companies like New Japan where stipulations are very few and far between on certain shows and you see companies like WWE where there's one or two stipulations a night what's kind of your strategy when it comes to using stipulations? it depends on the show like this is a special show I think you'll see more stipulations on like pay-per-views and streaming specials and uh, I think like a TV show, you'll probably see more straight wrestling matches and less stipulations. So this this was the kind of format, and uh, you know, and at All Out, you know, see some you'll see some stipulation matches for sure. We have some really exciting stuff planned for All Out, uh, and I think that uh, you know you'll see some in that element. You'll probably see more than you will on our weekly two-hour television show. How you guys are, are preparing for All Out? You know, in difference what we what you did on Double or Nothing or last year's All In. Uh, well, I wasn't at all in, so it's very different preparation because a lot of us weren't working that show, and Keith, you know, Keith wasn't producing. All, it was, so it's a very different team. But uh, uh, those guys learned a lot and took about very valuable experience. So certainly, coming back a year later, a lot has changed, and uh, we all got a lot of valuable experience from producing Double or Nothing and learned a lot. So uh, it'll be our first event of that magnitude of the you know the full full blown pay per view, uh, you know, available here and worldwide on pay per view. And uh, I think that it's, you know, we have a, a lot to live up to. We have a big act to follow, big shoes to fill after Double or Nothing. And I think we're really up to it. I think All Out's going to be an awesome show. I think it's very cool the guys are coming back with All Out, you know, a, a year later. And uh, with a chance, you know, with, with this loaded roster, you know, everything they had then and so much more, and a chance to do something really special. You personally, how are you handling the responsibilities of not only starting up AEW, but being an executive for a couple of sports teams, particularly with the Fulham with the transfer window open right now? I've been doing, it's a great question. I've been doing, it's really hard. I've been in London this week, and I've been here, and I've been going back and forth, and I've been in Jacksonville. It's really nice having the show in Jacksonville, so I was able to do a little bit of work there. And I've been doing work in the transfer window. I talked to George Mendez on the phone from the show. I talked to George Mendez last night in my hotel. I don't think there are a lot of people, executives like in the championship like uh, they're talking to George every day like uh, they're in the position I'm in uh, about trying to uh, do uh, deals. I've talked to like uh, the biggest football agents in the world, not to just drop George's name, but a lot of other guys too that I could drop. But while I've been here and a lot of teams uh, because there's a lot of th interesting things going on in the market. So I am like a really active executive. I can also talk to you about what uh, it, the Jags are thinking going into camp. but. I generally try not to get like too in depth. Uh, same as uh, when I did a I did a Fulham podcast where I did over an hour with the Fulham guys recently, and I think that podcast did really well on the sports podcast. I don't know if it worldwide if it did the kind of numbers Steve did because I think for Steve Austin it was one of the, if not the biggest show download wise Steve ever did. I believe it was the biggest download show Steve Austin's ever done, uh, and uh, which is saying something because Steve's interviewed pretty much everybody in the business, and uh, and I, we did real well with that Fulham one that I did, but I. Stayed away from the wrestling on there too, and we didn't talk about it all except they briefly congratulated me. It was like five seconds, and I said thanks. But uh, I try not to get too deep into it one because everybody wants to focus on wrestling here, but it's hard for me because yeah, there's only so many hours in the day. You have to multitask. It's really hard. Um, yeah. One of the things I noticed with your style is your transparency. Um, what how important it is for you to be open, honest? You know, not only when you're doing these interviews, but with talent. Like when they first meet you, you know, you want to make a good first impression. And they've, you know, pro wrestling is not known for transparency a lot of times when it comes to other companies. So it seems like you know a different style that you're kind of going. Are they kind of a little bit kind of what do you you know? Well, I don't I mean, know. sports, I, don't know, I mean, I don't you can't not talk about, about yeah. the other teams. Like you, you know, it's different here because we like you know you're playing yourself almost because you have to like put on the best show you can. You can't focus on the competition here. 
And for me, so the competition is almost ourself and putting on like the best event we can put on that challenge ourselves and focus on ourselves and like do the best within ourselves. So it is different, but I think there's other sports like that. It's like playing golf, you know, you can like see what other people are doing relative to par, pay attention, like, okay, well, I, you know, I need a birdie here or whatever. But at the end of the day, like it's about you and what you're doing. It's like uh, you have to focus on yourself. So um, it is, I do think that it is cool because it is different than the other sports I play because you spend so much time like scouting and watching tape of other people in here. I mean, you can scout other wrestlers and you watch, which is great because I love watching wrestling, right? Like other companies and stuff. But uh, you can make use of it and, you know, make it like an actual valuable skill instead of the one thing you're doing that's not like uh, productive use of your time watching, you know, English football and watching NFL and college football. But anyway, like uh, it's uh, I, I just try to be transparent with uh, like the media in all sport, you know, in in, uh, in England with with Fulham and uh, with the Jaguars, you know, because uh, you guys are just doing your jobs and uh, and with the fans too, because at the end of the day, I think that's like one of the reasons people like like you know like AEW, not just from me, but from the wrestlers, like we've been pretty real about it. I mean, you know, I mean, they're certainly like, you know, I think it's 2019 and people know wrestling's at work, but like we do come out and try and be like pretty like straight with you guys about like what we're doing, uh, that like this is uh, from our hearts and we are trying to give something to the fans. And I think people have really like bought into it and believe in it. And I, so I do think that kind of transparency like has really paid off, not like from me specifically, but also like from just like everybody here that like we really like it and everybody has a different, you know, everyone has a different take on it. Like Max came in and gave you his, his ver version of it, but that's, you know what, that's real life. Cause like, uh, that's like living with him. Like, you know, it's like being in business with him. You go places with him and you're people and they're like, that guy is like really rude. And you're like, yeah, that's like what he is. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, like, uh, so it's just like, it's life with MJF. How, is, uh, how has the creative team evolved in the past few months since AEW has really gotten underway? Is it, is it booked by committee or is it Since inception, it's been a committee. It's like, I think it's like a lot of wrestling companies have probably function with like one person who's like at the end of the day has to like make calls and go over everything, but with a bunch of people working together with, we have a system. We have a group of coaches that go through each match and every match has a coach. And then we have the EVPs who creatively are working together on everything, but not everybody's necessarily working the same amount on everything. Like for example, Kenny Omega, super involved and personally coaching the women's matches and like uh and then but me i'm going over everything with everybody to some degree and uh and so yeah that's how it, i mean it's a committee and we have a lot of people that are really involved in different levels and every uh but yeah to answer your question i think it's probably set up like a committee but with uh with the executive vice presidents all have like an incredible amount of input because everyone's got their own things that they focus on not just their own those guys their own angles but other people's angles too they all are really involved the young bucks are like super involved in what goes on in like tag team wrestling in our company and like uh cody not just in the singles but with so many people throughout the roster and and our production and uh and and every one of them comes up with things that you wouldn't believe like little elements of the show like there's great parts of all of our shows and you wouldn't believe it i'd be like oh that was some great thing and nick you know nick jackson came up with that and uh that had nothing to do with the Young Bucks, but you know, just d d different things. And uh, that's what's really cool. We talk a lot and uh, I can be, uh, and that's back to the question before about how I juggle all these things. I can be in England with a meeting with like all the biggest soccer agents and football clubs and trying to negotiate deals and with players. And you know, I can be, have look at my phone and I got 68 text messages on the thread with Cody, Matt, <laughs> Nick and Kenny. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll catch up. And uh, you know, you scroll through, it's just stuff moves fast. We all, we all talk a lot. and. Uh, and Brandy's very active in stuff going on with the women too. We have a lot of people, Christopher Daniels, uh, who's very involved in the creative. Chris Jericho always has amazing ideas. So um, it is like very much a committee. Uh, yeah, uh, but that's a great question. What, what, is there anything else? Uh? Tony, uh, Jungle Boy and Ali talked about a little bit earlier about intergender wrestling. What are your thoughts on it? And could we possibly see it in AEW? Probably won't see it in AEW. Uh, if there was one thing, I'll just be like super frank about this. If there was one thing, uh, how many of you guys were at All In? Who was at All In? A bunch of you guys were at All In? The Battle Royal, does anybody remember when Jordan Grace got hit in the face? Yes. That was probably the one thing I didn't like about All In. That and There were two things I didn't like about All In. That and the penis druids. Uh, and what? I didn't like the penis druids. I couldn't. I wouldn't do the penis druids on TV. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that on TV. On pay per view, you could probably do the pay penis druids. On pay per view, I probably would have done the penis druids. Okay. Uh, here's what I didn't like about it, to be honest with you. Here's what I didn't like about it at the time is like I'm a big hangman guy, and like he won the match, and you almost kind of forgot he won the match because like uh, it was a big. He's a, you know you want to protect uh, that guy in that situation. You feel real strong about that guy, and then look at in our company now and the two big shows we've done. I think he's come out and delivered and 
you know, I was talking to Steve Austin, and I don't know if you guys all listened to that, but Steve Austin said that guy's got star written all over him. And, like, Steve's not going to say it if he doesn't believe it. Like, that guy's a star. And he came out, he's a big star again tonight. And that was just how I felt. I was like, you know, like, it almost, you, do, you almost forgot he, Hangman won the match. Uh, so that's why I didn't like that. But, the, you know, I didn't like when Jordan Grace got hit in the face. I'm sorry to sidetrack. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't like, when, and I don't think that's cool. And, like, uh, I am, like, really, you know, domestic abuse, and uh, I don't think, uh, I'm not saying that is, and I, it's a really complex question, and I knew it would come up sooner or later, but it's, it's, it's probably not what we're going to do, and uh, we're going to focus on a, a men's division singles and tag and a women's division singles and tag and have those divisions, and, uh, you know, um, there could be some a mixed division mailer. I don't know. I haven't thought that much about it, but um, uh, I'd mixed matches we're probably not what we're going to focus on. On the penis druids, how actively did you guys uh, court Joey Ryan before he made the choice to sign with the Indies? <laughs> That's great. Uh, I like I really like Joey. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I've, uh, I've opened up a can of worms uh, on this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's funny. Uh, I was I didn't book. I was on my show. I didn't book the show. So like I was just I like I said it wasn't the it wasn't that. It was just like it, that like hang. I didn't like the whole thing with Hangman going. No, on. I just because, wonder if he tries to sign him. Like, did you guys actively try to get Joey? I mean, he does seem to have gone elsewhere. Uh, yeah, he's doing, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's tons of people I really like that aren't here. I mean, uh, but I'm not saying whether I've, uh, you know, made, like, active offer. I, I'd rather not get into, like, everybody we may, have and haven't made offers to, but I really like Joey. Joey's great, and he's obviously, like, really a featured character on Being the Elite, and he's really good friends with, like, a lot of the guys in the company. He's an awesome wrestler. Um, but, yeah, I just, I wasn't, I, I like Joey. I wasn't saying that. I was just saying uh, that, the, you know, the, 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 that element of, uh, it was one of the best uh, pay-per-views I think of all time, and like I said, uh, I did like I did like that. The penis druids are a lot better than Jordan Grace getting hit in the face, in my opinion. If that makes sense. That's fine. You said penis druids like six times. I'm sorry. It's just funny. It's good. It's funny. Yeah, it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it was. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm glad we elaborated on. You that. mentioned how like you know you got a lot of depth in the roster now, and the roster might be set for now. Um, you know, the same way a football team might try to bring in some guys who are like the good character guys. It seems like you've got a lot of those. You know wrestlers who are good character guys and we've heard that a lot today where it seems like everyone's very positive everyone kind of has each other's back is that you know go into it you just don't want you know a big name star here or someone who's a good worker but you want to make sure you get the right types of people here yeah like uh that's absolutely been the case here that has come up several times where there were people that we didn't take that like are we all think are like awesome perform awesome wrestlers like really good people that aren't here because uh i think people didn't want to deal with a headache and without like naming specific people I just think that like absolutely that's in any sport like there's people that with the talent's like undeniable so I think it's like a really great question it's one of those things that you and you always have to balance it right because sometimes uh, you can take a risk on somebody that doesn't have a great reputation because you've just heard things so you have to it depends on the information you get right like do you know firsthand did somebody in the company like dealt with it like and they'll say like yeah that's just a really hard person to work with well then if they've already been down that road and they really feel strongly about it then they're probably telling you the truth right so like uh that's a pretty good indicator i think in any sport like if you have people that have been in the locker room with those people whether you know you know whether it's football or wrestling i think you know uh you can trust your people and i think what we have here is like a really good uh dressing room of people that like have worked together before and like uh, people that like feel real strongly about each other and the people that haven't worked together before they work with like somebody here before everybody knows somebody here and like uh, that's uh, yeah that's a really good question because that is some, one of the strengths of our company I think is like we have a really good group of people and there are, there are tense moments for sure but like uh, you know it's been a, certainly through two shows it's been a pleasure um, yeah is there anything I mean do you guys have anything do you have, else do you have a city picked out for the first TNT show uh, have not, I've uh, not confirmed it yet, uh, but uh, we're like working on cities, not just for the first one, but for all of them, because it's going to be Why is it Jacksonville? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, it's, and, uh, you know, bear in mind, uh, you know, planning to go in the fall, and it will be during football season, so that would be, uh, that would obviously be thinking about that, for sure. Um, but I really enjoyed catching up with you guys. I try to answer everybody's questions. If anybody has anything else, and I'm always pretty available, so it's great catching up with you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.